light the candle, friends, as we remember Jesus Christ is the light of the world. If you have a candle at home, you can light it. And as we pray, we can pray together. Light of the world, you came down into darkness. And Lord Jesus Christ, you are our light. May we never forget that you are the light. Amen. Friends, wherever you are, peace of the Lord be with you. Jesus Christ once said to the disciples, and the message is for us even today as we gather to worship. He said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. So Christ says to us this morning. And even Mother Teresa in her understanding of the love that we ought to give to one another, she once said, I read this quote, people who love each other are fully and truly are the happiest people in the world. They may have little, they may have nothing, but they are happy people. Everything depends on how we love one another. Close the court. And so, beloved in Christ, wherever you are gathered this morning, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. And whoever doesn't love does not know God. And so today... As we are gathered in worship, Trevor is the preacher of the day, and we are completing today the series on the revolutionary teachings of Jesus Christ. And so Trevor will unpack for us this morning how we love each other is the theme of the day, how we love each other. Trevor will share in different ways and uh, how we love each other each other. Come, let us pray. Ever-loving God, you created us in love. As we are gathered here in this place, transform us, your people. If there is any of us who has hatred towards anyone, transform the hate into love, grudges into love. May your spirit at this hour, O oh God, in this worship and in the word that is to be preached here be a time of divine change to the unloved and the unloving. In the name of you, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. And so, friends, just to remind us that we today we celebrate in the Christian calendar the, transform, the transfiguration of Christ. And so may in this day, as we celebrate and remember the transfiguration of Christ, that the love that we share, the love that we love others as God has loved us, be a moment of our own transfiguration, be a moment of our own transformation. May you be transformed by the love you give to one another. May you be transformed by the love that you give to others and the love that you receive now and forevermore. And over to the worship team. Friends, enjoy the rest of the worship. Thank you. Good morning, Northfield. It is so good to be with you today on this wonderful Sunday morning. Won't you join us as we worship together?
uh, really good to uh, be with you here again uh, at Northfield Methodist Church. And uh, those of you who have been with us over the past couple of weeks will know that we are uh, doing a sermon series uh, on the first letter uh, of John. And so far we have explored uh, God's love for us and uh, our love for God. And today our, our focus is on our love uh, for those around about us. And so our reading today comes from uh, 1 John uh, chapter, chapter 2, and I'm reading from verses uh, 9 uh, to, to 11. Listen carefully for God's word as it comes to you. Anyone who claims, anyone who claims to be in the light but hates uh, his brother or sister is still uh, in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light, and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has, has blinded them. And so we thank God uh, today uh, for those words from John and we pray that uh, through those words, uh, God may speak a very personal word to each one of us. Over the years uh, here at uh, Northfield Methodist Church, uh, I've, often, I've often suggested that, that the acid test of our relationship with God the acid test of whether our faith is genuine or not genuine uh, is not how much we pray. It's not how much we know of the Bible. It's not whether we have uh, all our doctrine correct. It's not whether we speak in tongues. It's not whether we serve those in need. All those things that I've mentioned are critically, critically important. But I want to suggest today that they're not the acid test of our relationship with God. Whether our faith is genuine or not. I want to suggest that the acid test of our faith is whether you and I are becoming more loving human beings. That's the acid test. If, if our faith is not leading us towards a greater love in our own hearts for those around about us, there is something radically wrong uh, with our relationship with God. Never forget uh, many years ago in a, in a previous congregation, uh, there was this guy who, uh, whenever I met him at church, was really passionate. Uh, he was always wanting us to pray more. He was wanting revival to happen at every service. Uh, he was wanting miracles to take place when we worship. And that's quite a heavy pressure, let me tell you, uh, on, the, on the person who's preaching. But he's really, really passionate. I never forget one day going to visit him at his home. Never forget. He wasn't there, uh, but... Uh, the person that he was married to, his wife, was there. And I said to his wife, I said, you know, your husband is a really, really passionate Christian, isn't he? And she was very quiet. 
And then she said to me these words, you can say that, Trevor. You don't have to live with him. My friend had failed the acid test, but I'm not going to throw any stones in his direction today. And my own deepest, deepest failures as a Christ follower have been failures uh, in loving. So I want to ask you today how it's going with you. How does the acid test play out in uh, the world of your own relationships? How's it going with your most intimate partner, your husband, your wife, your children? How's it going with them, your parents, your siblings, the extended family, your neighbors, your, your colleagues at work, uh, your, your in-laws? Uh, your in-laws, <laughs> your in-laws, how's it, how's it going with them? How's it going? Now it's against, it's against this backdrop that I want to extend to you today an invitation. And it comes directly from the words that I read to you from that first letter of John. John is very, very clear. Did you notice that in his, in his letter? He says, you know, if we love uh, our brother or sister, we, we, we walk in the light. If we don't love our brother, our sister, uh, we walk in darkness. And as I reflect on those words, in those words there is an invitation, I believe, and a challenge and it's the invitation for us to let God grow within us a deeper capacity to love those uh, around about us. That's the invitation for today. It's to let God transform our hearts inwardly so that we may grow our capacity to love those around us uh, more deeply, more fully. Now I've been thinking a lot about how we, you know, how we go on this journey uh, of becoming a, a more loving human being. And I've distilled uh, my thinking just into a few thoughts. And I want to share them with you. And I, I share them with myself as well. And I, I really pray that, uh, that somehow through what I'm going to say now, that God is going to speak a very personal word to us within the context of all the relationships uh, that we are part of. The first thing I want to say is this, that we, we, we grow our capacity to love when we are willing, whether we have the courage, to honestly acknowledge our own failures in loving. I think that's where the journey begins. You know, so often when we talk about a subject like this, we often begin to look to others and we, we, we say, you know, I just wish my partner was more loving or I wish my parents were more loving or I, I wish my kids were more loving. And, and so we focus on others uh, rather than on the quality of our own loving. I never forget when I first became a follower of Christ, we, we used to sing a chorus and now this is you know, going back 50 uh, odd years or so. But this was a wonderful chorus, you know, it's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my brother, it's not my sister, it's not my husband, it's not my wife, it's not my chummy, it's not my cherry, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing, standing in the need of prayer. And so I want us to ask God today, together, I want us to ask God today, to shine, to shine his light upon our heart and upon the ways in which we fail to love well. 
for many years, and I've often said this, um, uh, I had a mentor, his name was Dallas Willard, and he would often say, he would often say that our failures to love usually take one of two forms. On the one hand, we fail to love those around about us when we, when we attack them. And usually we don't attack, as it were, our loved ones with our fists, but we attack them with our words. We speak words that, that harm uh, instead of help. We speak words that, that, that break down uh, instead of build up. We speak words that, that discourage rather than, than encourage. And we wound, we wound each other with our words, our words of ridicule, of sarcasm, of, of calling each other names, of judging one another. Some of the deepest, deepest wounds in our lives have been caused by words that have been spoken to us where we felt attacked. But there's another form in which we fail to love, and that is when we withdraw from others. On the one hand, we, we may attack, but on the other hand, we often withdraw. We disengage, we, we kind of move into a sullen silence. We become cold and unresponsive. I wonder, I wonder which is your way of failing in loving. I think usually we have a, a kind of temperament or personality that leans more to the one way than the other. I know that over the years I've really, had to, I've really had to ask God to deal deeply with my tendencies to withdraw uh, often from others in relationship. It's been a long, long journey of, of inner surgery and change. Can I invite you today, I think this is where the journey begins, can I invite you today to, to ask God to shine his light on how you often fail to love? But I want to say something else. I think we, we, we grow our capacity to love uh, when we surrender ourselves daily. <laughs> Uh, to God's love and let God's love fill us from the inside out. Th the words that I read to you earlier were written by a disciple called John. Uh, when Jesus first met John and his brother James, you may remember that he referred to them as sons of thunder. Now, they weren't called sons of thunder because they were loving. <laughs> they were called sons of thunder because they were known for, most, for, their, for their anger, for their aggressiveness. There's a moment in the ministry of Jesus when they're going through Samaria and uh, James and John are so angry with the people in this village because they don't offer hospitality to Jesus and his followers that they want to call down fire from heaven on this village. They want God to destroy it. That was the kind of heart that John had. And then as he goes on this journey with Jesus... Uh, his heart is inwardly transformed. And gradually and slowly and deeply, the love of God begins to fill him very deeply. And he finds himself becoming more and more a loving man. And he has that wonderful sentence in his letter later when he says, we, we love because God first loved us. And somehow he's able to love because there is, there is a love in him that comes from God. 
I think we really need to grasp this because so often, you know, when we think about our failures of loving, we then think the way to become a more loving is to try harder. And so we try hard to love. We, we almost try to manufacture love for those around about us. And, and whenever we try hard to change ourselves on the inside, we will always, always fail. And let me tell you, I know that from my own experience. Uh, Debbie has said to me, Trevor, when you die, I'm going to put up a tombstone. And on that tombstone, I'm going to say, he really tried. <laughs> I know what it means to try hard, to try hard and to fail and to fail. And we don't want to be, do we? We don't want to be loved by someone who's trying hard to love us. I wouldn't like Debbie to come to me and say, Trevor, I'm going to really try hard to love you today. So the way ahead is not to try hard. The way is to surrender ourselves to God's love so that God's love can begin to fill us and then begin to flow through us effortlessly and freely. Now, the, the best way that I know how to surrender to God, uh, I, and I often say this, is just make a daily trip to the cross. Every day, usually first thing in the morning, it's good to do this. It's to come again to the cross, the place where God's love meets us in Jesus Christ, meets us in all our failure and all our sin, and as we come to that place again and again, and as we open up our hearts more widely to God's love in Jesus Christ, gradually, slowly, deeply, God's love begins to flow into us. Our hearts begin to change. We begin to move from darkness to light. Can I invite you today into that surrender? Can I invite you today to say to God, God, I'm not very good at loving, but I come to you in all my failures, and I thank you that you love me and accept me, and I want you to help me to open the door of my heart more widely to the love that you have for me so that it may begin to permeate my whole being. Can I say one last thing? One last thing. We, 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 we grow in our capacity uh, to love when we learn really to pay attention. While we cannot manufacture love, we can't manufacture love, what we can do, what we can do is to learn how to pay attention to each human being that we meet. And this is a huge challenge for us today. Uh, we, we, we live in an age of massive distraction. Uh, every day there are loud voices around us wanting to grab our attention, to buy this, to subscribe to this, to believe this. And usually we are all over the place with our attention. I read an article the other day that what we need so much today is not time management, but we need attention management. And so I want to invite you to go on a journey, and it's a long journey of learning to be attentive, of learning to pay attention to the person that you're with, uh, to be present to them, to be present with them. Uh, and I'm sure you know the experience of when you're with someone and you can almost see in their eyes <laughs> that they're not really with you. They are somewhere else. They are absent. Um, I have that feeling often on a Sunday morning when I preach and I, I look out on the congregation and I can see by their eyes that they are not present. They are absent. 
So it's learning to be present. It's learning how to listen deeply to someone. Really learning to, to listen. Learning to show a genuine interest in what's going on in their life. Learning to share ourselves honestly and generously and openly with others. And it's as we learn to pay attention, it's as we learn to pay attention that somehow it, it allows the love of God which is in our hearts to flow through us to those around about us so that they begin to actually feel that we care for them and that we love them. I think I've said enough. Let me just bring this uh, to a close. Uh, there was a, a poet many years ago, a writer, uh, William Blake. And once uh, he, he, he wrote that you and I, that you and I are placed on this earth to bear the beams of love. That you and I are placed on this earth just one time. We have one life to bear the beams of love to those that we encounter in our lives. And I hope I hope that we'll go on that journey. It starts as we uh, acknowledge our failures. It, it deepens as we, as we come to the cross, as we open up ourselves to God's love in Jesus Christ so that God's love can be poured into our hearts through his spirit. And then it flows out, it flows outwards to those around about us as we learn to pay attention. And it's as we go on that journey that we learn to bear the beams of love to those around about us. And today, I invite you and myself onto that journey. God bless you. Now unto him who is able to